Good morning, sisters and brothers in Christ, and welcome to St. Ivory Field Parish. We are glad that you have chosen to worship the Lord with us. If you are new to the parish, we invite you to register at the parish office or on the website. Before we begin Mass, may we request everyone to please silence your mobile phones and prepare ourselves for this sacred celebration. Let us include in our prayers at this Mass the following intentions. For the eternal repose of the souls of Ermilio Matrutegos and Leticia Soto Bacchion. Today we celebrate the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider today is Father Tom Rivera and our deacon, Deacon Roy Paragua. Today's readings can be found on Let Us Celebrate Hopefully, page 114. Please all rise now and let us sing the entrance song. Which is 527. Praise to the Lord. Number 527. Jesus, you call us to follow the commandment. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you teach us the ways of truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
more precious than gold or silver, or silver, O oh God, more enduring than health and beauty is the spirit of your wisdom. In her hands, uncounted wealth, in her company, all good gifts. Send this wisdom from your holy heaven, that we may hear and follow the good teaching, the good teacher Jesus, who looks on us with love. We ask this through Jesus, who is not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters, the high priest who sympathizes with our weakness and intercedes on our behalf. Christ Jesus, who is one with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Edward uh, Henry Richards gives us an example of practical wisdom. And he writes, A wise old owl sat on an oak. The more he saw, the less he spoke. The less he spoke, the more he heard. Why aren't we like that wise old bird? The king in the first reading seeks wisdom from God, practical wisdom, not power, wealth, beauty, riches, but a wisdom that brings us closer to God and to a, a life that is worthwhile. So let's seek that wisdom from the first reading. A reading of the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her. Nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold, in view of her, is a little sand. And before her, silver is to be accounted mighty. Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things together came to me in her company, and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be unto God. Our response is number 84. Fill us with your love, Lord, number 84.
Our second reading it continues to help us search out that wisdom that God gives us. In, in the letter to the Hebrews, it speaks about the power of God's word that penetrates to the deepest areas of our life and, and of our soul and uh, allows God to uh, speak to us if we are open to uh, the deepest levels of wisdom. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews, brothers and sisters, indeed the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him, to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. For the sake of the gospel, 
who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age houses and brothers and sisters and mother and children and lands with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. The Gospel of the Lord. So we said hi earlier to each other. Now I'll ask you, tell that person who you said hi to, or the person behind you and in front of you, if you don't have anyone beside you. The one thing you are afraid that God will ask you to do or leave behind in order to follow Him. The one thing that God, you're afraid God will ask you to do or leave behind in order to follow Him. Go ahead, ask and tell the one beside you. Paul and Olivia will tell each other over here. I see it. Oh, you would like my students from about 17 years ago. About 17 years, about 17 years ago when I was uh, starting, when I started teaching at city colleges, in order to improve the students' um, uh, success rate in my class and their persistence, I decided to switch the way I taught. And I switched from being the instructor as the sage on the stage talking for the entire class period to the instructor as the guide on the side. I brought the students up into teams of three and four, gave them handouts and have them develop the concepts themselves, actively talking to each other, guided by the questions I wrote for them. And I would roam around and check whether they're advancing. So like you, they're used to sitting right there, listening to me and not talking to each other. You won't do that, don't worry. Um, it's just an exercise. Uh, those who were used to doing this throughout grade school and high school, sitting uh, and listening to the teacher talk endlessly, uh, were resistant to that change because now they have to be more actively involved in their own learning, they have to be more actively engaged in engaging the material. There was a great resistance. So like my students back then, many people might have felt like you have something now. They have their study habits now, they have their uh, routine in the classroom now, and then suddenly uh, the teacher changes his or her pedagogy. Uh, like you, you may have a sport down, a task at work down, or getting a, a house chore down to a system, like you know, folding clothes and having that routine, getting everything done throughout the day. You have finally mastered it. Then, when you thought everything was finally working as you planned and worked for, something comes up. You might get insured. Um, a new supervisor comes in, maybe you change the workflow. Um, a child gets sick, something comes up, and everything is thrown off. It's like life is not all over again. Today, we encounter in a man who has been following the commandments since he was a boy. He thinks he has all together and is on his way to a life and is just asking Jesus for confirmation that he's got it down. But when Jesus invites him to something deeper, something more, he is crushed. As he will have to do more. The readings present us with three things that lead us in growing closer to Jesus. Number one, we all have to make a choice, the choice for God. Number two, each significant choice has a price associated with it, an element of sacrifice. And if we make the right choices, number three, we are assured of a rich reward. And as we uh, heard in the last part of the last reading, not just 
eternal life after our Lord of God has passed away. But He gave it. Choosing God. Sometimes there's a big choice. Sometimes there's a big choice between good and bad, between um, good and evil, between right and wrong. And it's not right to steal. So it's easier to choose not to steal. It's an easy choice. Murdering someone is bad. That's an easy choice. Right? That's an easy choice between the moral and immoral act. Sometimes you don't have bad options. So you have to choose the lesser of two evils or the least of several bad options. But oftentimes, all the various options are somehow good. Now you have to choose between good, better, and best. You have to weigh down the, the way of the pros and cons of each choice. We just don't always know which one to choose, which doors to open, and how far to enter. The more options we have, the more difficult is the choice. My wife and I always have problem choosing which restaurant to eat to when we're inside. Do we want power or riches or fame or even good health? These are all good. But they will but will they really satisfy what our heart is longing for? To make the right choice, we need proper discernment. And we need wisdom for that. Solomon in the first reading prayed and pleaded to God that he was given prudence and wisdom. To him, scepter and throne, the finest gems, the gold and silver were nothing compared to what he got, prudence and wisdom. To make that choice usually means you have to discard the others. This is not an easy thing to do, as, as I said earlier, when you have several good choices. There's always an element of sacrifice involved. We accept one job offer, we give up the opportunities that the others might provide. The students who walk into the guided inquiry learning uh, style I introduced gave up sitting pretty in class and not doing much. They gave up their anonymity because now they have to engage with other classmates. They have to speak. The young man in the gospel really wanted eternal life and that's a choice worthy of not worthier than any other. But the price he was asked to pay was more than he expected. He was crushed. He walked away sad because he cannot give up the security and comfort he thought his riches gave him. To choose God is to face the consequence of his word. And sometimes that is as sharp as a two-edged sword. Here's where we need to fully rely on God, to truly trust in our Lord, to have faith. So one of the mysteries of our faith is the unfathomable generosity of God. Solomon preferred prudence and wisdom. And at the end of the first reading, we learned that he had all the other riches besides. We are asked that go of our love for material things, things that are transitory, and yet we get more than what we need. We are asked to make these choices in faith. The outcomes are never uncertain. We are always sure what we're going to get. What do we need faith for? My students who walked into the guided inquiry learning did not know these my words. Not all of them is my words. But many of them got more than just a way. Many of them were able to now learn how to learn other things. They got skills that they didn't expect they would get from engaging in that activity. 
Better that thou should be not by him. Until we make it or take that first step, we will not know that we have not fallen. Or if we fall, we will not know that we are not really hurt. Jesus' disciples gave up the security of home and found the family and followed him. Peter told them, Who can be saved? But Jesus told them in the end that no one has given up family and, and riches for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will be empty handed, even in this life, even in this world. Probably the faith needed to make the choice also supplies us with the same faith to see everything, the consequences, as blessings. We may not be given material wealth or material prosperity, but we can see what we receive as spiritual prosperity. God demands so much of us, but He gives so much more. What things are you afraid of? that God might ask you to do, to give up, to follow Him. Are you willing to take the next step to grow closer to God and pray, hope, and not worry? Pray, hope, and not worry. Let us fully trust in Jesus and may this trust be reflected in the way we live our lives. Justice, give way to justice, peace, and 
peace, and abundant blessings for native peoples throughout the Americas. Let us pray to the Lord. That this holy assembly be aware of those in our midst who suffer want. Let us pray to the Lord. That all the intentions of this Mass be heard, especially for the souls of Virgilio Madridenos and Leticia Sotelo Matuyo. And for all our parishioners, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, continue to respond with your divine wisdom to our prayers of the faithful. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most powerful and merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was to suffer on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread, saying the blessing, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice again giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Jesus Christ, your Son, 